to think systems. Okay? Systems are obviously something Nepalese don't like to think about because we tend to always look at problems from a cause and an effect. So there is a cause and there must be an effect. So the system, so let's try to understand system. So I'm going to give you a very simple example and then move to a bigger example of something I'm working on. So 1990 was the big political change in Nepal and at that time, I'll give you the perfect example, Jagir Prasad Bhedwal was the you know, person being elected you know, from Chitun in you know, a district into the parliament. And he was giving a very interesting speech outside Chitun and in his speech he said, one of the speech that he was giving. Okay. Now, those of you who aspire to study at Harvard or any business school, there is a book you can buy called Getting to Yes. In the book, the first principle that you separate in a system is you separate the people from the problem. So, if we go down to Chiton and we ask the local people, what is the problem? And they said something very simple. They said, the problem is A, we have to graze our animals. And number two, we need fuel wood in order to cook. So the park and people conflict that looked very complex was not complex because if you could provide them grazing and if you could provide them fuel, there would be no need to enter the national park. Okay, now think systems. The biogas plant is a very simple system. You build a digester, you put the animal manure into it, you get methane as a byproduct. The methane is good for both lighting but also for cooking. Now just look at how clever the technology is. In order to run the plant, you have to stall feed the animals. You cannot graze them in the national park. Okay? But once you have the methane, there is no need to go into the national park for firewood because you have a simple source of fuel. So as the head of the IUCN office here in Nepal, I said, let's build TM. That's what a biogas plant, let's build it. So we built the TM. So let me tell you the story of how change happens in Nepal. When we were trying to get the first TM families to build the first TM plants, there was a big crowd in Chiton. And they said, we will not allow you to build these plants. And I said, why will you not allow us to build the plant? And they said, this was a plot to make sure that Chiton never got electricity. You build in Nalayonga, Swadhyantra Garego. So next time, I got 10 volunteers who were building the plants, and these were domes. And so there was a big crowd again, and they said, this guy and the contractors, they're going to steal the money and run away because the dome is going to collapse. <laughs> the third time, the plants were working, they were complete, and there was a big crowd, right? And you know what they said? Only people close, close to the ruling party got it. <laughs> okay? So one of the first things you have to understand about change is that you cannot make everybody happy. Okay? Change is not about keeping people happy. Now the question comes, let's look at the second system. After the 10th plant, did the 11th one get built? No. You think the 11th one will get, you think the 12th one get, it didn't get built. So I went back and said, why aren't they building the 11th and the 12th plant? And it was very simple because the government said, if you go to the Agriculture Development Bank, Krishna Gas Bank, and if you take a loan to build the biogas plant, then you can build it. And now imagine in a country like Nepal, which farmer is going to take their Lal Buddha, go to the bank, and get a loan to build a biogas plant? Nobody. So I went to parliament at the time, and I convinced the parliamentarians that we need to change the National Parks Act. So the act, the, the one we amended basically said, the people who live next to the national park will get 50% of the revenue from the national park. So now this was a lot of money, right? So in the development jargon, what you have to understand is that they were previously defined as stakeholders. Now they became shareholders. So they became shareholders of the national park. And so with this money, we began to build biogas plants. And so somebody take a guess, how many biogas uh, plants do you think that are in Nepal today outside national park? Somebody, 65? Or guess? Are you talking about biogas plants or not? 40,000? Somebody else would like to take a guess? So we just crossed 300,000 biogas plants. Okay, so 300,000. And now, what you have to understand is that the methane that is captured in the biogas plant is the amount of methane that Nepal doesn't release into the atmosphere. 
So the climate convention allows you to actually con convert that into a monetary value. So what we've done now is to convert the methane that we captured in the biogas plant and we sell it in the global market for $9 a ton. And you know how much that money is? That money is enough to build 40,000 more biogas plants every year in Nepal. So this is what we call CDM. It's a very simple mechanism called clean development mechanism. Okay. So the money right now it gets dispersed through the AEPC or the Alternate Energy Promotion Center. Okay. Now, what was the impact of all that work? The 60 rhinos that we had left in 1972, the initial design of the park was done so that the 800 workers of the regular army were protecting 60 rhinos. Can you imagine? So now, we have 700 rhinos because there is no park and people conflict and last year was the first year when not a single rhino was posed in this country. Not a single rhino was posed. But on top of that, 11% Bhubhag Hamro Nepal Gudun Rashi Nibun Dutyori in 1990. So Dagni Prasad Bengal is a good friend of mine because we have increased Nepal's area of protected area to 22%. And it doubles in Nepal. Can you imagine what is the area of protected areas in the United States? It's less than 5%. And a country like Nepal has set aside 22%. Okay. So the country like Nepal has set aside 22% of our land area of protected area. Now, the reason I'm telling you this story is to draw a parallel to hydropower. This winter, the load setting will become 18 hours, and there is no doubt about it. Eh? So all of us have to go and buy candles, all of us will have to buy something, but it is going to be a very dark and very cold winter. So a small group of us, we said, can we draw those lessons, can we draw those parallels, and do something about the hydropower sector? So we just finished a big power summit yesterday, where the Chinese were there, the Indians were there, the Norwegians were there, every person was there. And I made sure that everybody who entered the room at Solti also paid for it. So 5,000 rupees was the registration fee. And then of course we had sponsors. And believe it or not, I think for a two-day event, we raised probably 1 crore 30 lakh rupees. Just from registration fee. Now, the plan is very simple. So we invited the president of Nepal, who was there basically to articulate a vision for hydropower. Oh, you know you have to make the information very simple. Right? 3 crore, 3 crore Nepal is the information. That's the only way you collate everybody. How many of you remember the old Marlboro country ads? The Churur could be happen to Welcome to Marlboro country. So you know how we are branding Nepal? A hydro-powered country. So battery-powered, diesel-powered, everything. Hydro-powered country. Okay? So it makes it very simple for people to understand that this country is now going to use its water resources to basically not just become a clean carbon zero country, but also is going to help China and India to move away from fossil fuels, to move away from coal and diesel. Okay, now having said that, what happens in the system? Now think about systems. So 1958 megawatts of power purchase agreements have been signed, which is double the existing grid of 700 megawatts. Now what we have to understand, remember the biogas story. Okay. So one of the announcements you will hear very soon is that when the hydropower entrepreneurs buy cement, they pay bad tax. When they buy dandy, they pay bad tax. Okay. So the announcement will basically say anybody who connects one megawatt of energy onto the grid by 2075, they will get 10 million rupees tax return on the bad they pay. You see how incentives work. So you pay tax when you buy the cement, but if you bring the electricity on, you will get the tax back. Okay. Now let's look at another problem. The Maoist, they have a very strong view on hydropower that is meant for export. Their view is very simple that unless you saturate the Nepali market, we will not allow you to export energy to India. Let me just explain to you what that means. Okay? What that means is that because we built what we call run of the river hydro plants, so in winter the production is low, but when the monsoon starts, the production becomes very big. So if you are going to invest in hydropower, your biggest challenge is what to do with the energy that you will get in summer. Then I mean steel energy also. Okay. Now, 
try to understand in india when it starts getting hot that's when the demand curve goes up in winter when our glaciers freeze our demand goes up so that is why there is load shedding in india then there is load shedding in nepal now the term that we use very often in public is nepal le hydro power besne and this case a lot of people angry amro desh ma load shedding bhai raha cha ka besne hain anthuni khan ma waha le bhashan dita ke sabai taali banaucha so we have to use a very simple word called we are going to integrate the nepali grid with the indian grid so the integration bhaneko ke ta bhanda keri hamro demand huda keri bijli eta bada flow huncha ra hamro spill huda keri uta tiru flow huncha okay so if you look at the same system between canada and the united states in a 24 hour for your 24 24 ghanta ko dio bhane there is a time when canada sells electricity to the united states for 2 cents that's probably when all the americans are sleeping and it becomes 10 cents when all the factories are working and right? so you have to think of how you manage those demands and how you integrate the grid aba kuro ki auncha bhane how do you develop hydro power in nepal well you have to have a diplomatic skill how do you negotiate then right? ab let's take another aspect media kanti pur le tin din agadi yahi power summit lai target garera ra unle ke lekhyo bhane india ma aile bijuli ko bhav chai 1 rupya 40 paisa cha नेपाली बिजुल कसरी बेच्ने भनेर एकदम ठुलो कथा कभर भेज लेख्यो नाउ द प्रब्लम इज इफ पुट्स अप अ लट अफ डेफिनेस हैन एक रुपैया चालिस बेचेको मार्केटमा कसरी बेच्ने भनेर सबै सोच्छ व्हाट यु नीड टु अंडरस्ट्यान्ड एन्ड दिस इज हाउ यु हैव टु थिंक एज अ सिस्टमिक थिंकर इज दैट द मनसून दिस इयर इज 22% अबव एभरेज जब मनसून चाहिँ जुन एभरेज भन्दा 22% बढी हुँदा के हुन्छ ऑल द हाइड्रो पावर प्लांट्स आर ओभर प्रोड्युसिंग On top of that, India has cost of systems. Sir, when if you use irrigation pumps to irrigate your land, electricity is free. So, one side of pumping is alone no problem. Or one side, sir, pani dehri bhai bhi kyon? The price of electricity goes down, and this is what you call spot tariff, sir. So, it's only for irrigation and in agriculture. Okay. Now, if you don't understand these bigger systems, what happens? People tend to believe, and the word spreads through Kanthipur that. There is no way a place can sell electricity to India. Our two years of passing monsoon no gas is used. It will become eleven rupees. But you see how the damage is already done. One hundred rupees only here can't be put here front page. I'm not having that. So this becomes the constant challenge of trying to get everybody together. So politically, how do we do it? We divided all the hydropower plants into four categories. The first category is called domestic demand meet government. डोमेस्टिक पूंजी बनने प्रोजेक्ट हो ओके सो टू बी बिल्ड विथ डोमेस्टिक कैपिटल वर्क फॉर डोमेस्टिक कंजन जैसे तामा कोशी संचय कोष को पैसा नागरिक लगाने कोष को पैसा हम सब बैंक को पैसा इट गोज फर डोमेस्टिक कंजन सो तो बना सा देव गुरुंगी हेज नो प्रब्लम विथ दैट वहाँ ने तैयार कर पावर प्लांट तो जलाऊ कि तो डोमेस्टिक हो सो वी ट्राई टू सल्व दैट प्रब्लम बाई कैटेगराइजिंग दैम इंटू वन फिगर द सेकेंड कैटेगरी इज वेरी इंटरेस्टिंग इज डोमेस्टिक डिमांड बट विथ इंटरनेशनल कैपिटल जहां से वर्ल्ड बैंक को लगाने आईएफसी को कैपिटल सो इट्स अ लिटिल कम्प्लिकेटेड वाई फिगर्स जस्ट लाइक भटिकोशी हाइड्रो प्लांट द पीपीए इज डन इन यूएस डॉलर अब हे में कसरी हाइड्रो पावर अड़किन भादा खेल डलर में तो पीपीए कर विदेश में सब पैसा लिया जाने तब सब नेपाली भर हम इस सोच डीजेल चाहे डलर तीर लिया बिजली कलर तीर न अलग गये बाहर महीना में सो जस्ट इमेजिन दिस नंबर वन हंड्रेड एंड नाइन मिलियन है वन हंड्रेड एंड नाइन मिलियन रुपीज वर्थ अफ के डलर्स वर्थ अफ डीजल इज बिंग इंपोर्टेड वेर एज इफ यू पेड इन डलर्स फॉर फॉरेन इन्वेस्टर्स टू प्रोड्यूस हाइड्रो पावर वी वुड हेव द सेम एनर्जी फॉर आवर सेल्स एंड यू कुड सेल इट टू इंडिया एंड मेक मनी अफ इट सो दिस बिकम्स अ सेकेंड कैटेगरी अ थर्ड कैटेगरी फॉरेन मनी बट फॉर एक्सपोर्ट अस में अलग कम्प्लिकेटेड हो and because these plants are being built basically to send the electricity out and to make money ab kesto ma pani yoga ke prashna uthyo bhane ane bhutan le ta yesari betra khai rahako chha so thank god the governor of the rashtra bank was chairing that session and he replied to this person in the audience saying i talked to my counterpart the governor of bhutan of the central bank of bhutan and bhutan is almost bankrupt selling power to india whatever so we have to get this facts correct अभी खाली हावा भर भूटान ने तो यो गो सिंगापुर ने तो यो गो वी हेट टू गेट पास 